Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, Revoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Greetings, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson across the nation. The phone number is 877-973-7425. You know what? I, I, so I see Dennis sitting here on hold, and, and he, when you call the show, Charlie puts a little note what you want to talk about, and, and I'm I, I, my interest is piqued. I'm, I'm intrigued. I normally don't like to start show, particularly when I have a monologue that I, I, I something I want to talk about. But I want to talk to Dennis before I go to anything else. Dennis, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing well, Eric. How about yourself? I'm great. So the reason I want to talk to you is because I I've asked uh, for people to call and and uh, how how now as opposed to then. Uh, Trump battling the deep state, and and Charlie says you you got a theory, and I just I wanted to talk to you and let you exp- make your case to the audience in a way that I just can't process. But since you believe it, you can, and, and I'm I'm willing to hear you out. Well, sure. Well, there's a couple of points that that uh, I first of all, thanks for uh, calling, put me on. Uh, I've been wanting to call you for a while and um, uh, haven't been around get, get around to it, but. Um, uh, you keep saying that uh, that Trump supporters are all supporting because it's all emotional, and that's not necessarily true for a lot of us, and necessarily true for me. Um, I my want to vote for Trump because I do believe he is best fit for what needs to happen uh, in our country. Hopefully, after uh, Biden is elected or kicked out of office, uh, and the reason I say that is that. I don't believe that I think Trump is the only one that will self-sacrifice himself to um, to get rid of the uh, deep state. Um, we know that he's not in this to make money. He's not one of these presidents that leaves and makes more money. As a matter of fact, he's lost money um, since he's become president, whereas most of them become millionaires afterwards. He is not. Um, and it would be easy for him to just say, all right, I'm done with this. I don't have to do this. And as soon as he declares that he's not running for president, I'm willing to believe that all these court cases and all that will go away. Okay, so, let, let me ask you how you see this. Um, the So in he was president, the election was stolen in part with the well, deep state. Well, I agree with you. I agree with you in that I don't believe that it was stolen through the changing of the ballots and stuff like that. I do believe it was stolen because 92 percent of all um, everything was reported about him was negative. It was all negative news. Yeah, OK. News, yeah, that, 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 and that's a good way that, to see, you know, that. the whole Hunter Biden being uh, suppressed was and then maybe changing of some of the laws mm-hmm. uh, that weren't up to the secretary of state to be able to do that of the state. Um, so I don't think it was a free and fair election. I don't know okay. if it was stolen, but it definitely was not a free and fair. That's election. a good way to talk about it. Cause I agree with you on that one. Um, I, I actually agree with you the way you're saying the way you're talking about it, the, the media came out to get him. They savaged him. They didn't want to be fair on, on COVID things like that. Now l- let me ask you though, on, on the deep state issue, cause this is one that, that I just, I, I'm, I'm struggled to wrap my head around is they came out after him, during his tenure the first time. Um, I just, I don't know how he having the first time pledged to get rid of the deep state and didn't, would the second time be able to do what he couldn't do the first time that he wanted to do? Well, I'm sure there's a lot of things there's, that he wasn't like, uh, wasn't able to do that he'd like to be able to do. And that is finish the wall being that he, uh, uh, did more to, uh, complete the wall. Um, in that, when he says he does something, you have to admit that he is one of the 
president in our time that has actually done said something he was going to do something and really worked hard towards getting it done. Most of it he did. There's some things he didn't get done. So, um, uh, so yeah. Now, do I think there's a possibility of him being able to get uh, work towards a uh, deep state? Here's my idea. It, well, here's my um, how I think about that. I think there's a lot of people that early on when he talked about the deep state in like 2015 and even before when people talked about deep state, it was like, yeah, mm, I don't know if that's really true and stuff like that. Now we not only believe that there is a deep state, but it's a whole lot further and has a whole lot more roots than we ever thought it did. And I think a lot of people are waking up to that. And they begin to say, wait a minute, look at how Hunter Biden's being treated and how Trump is being treated. Yeah, you're a thousand percent right on that. Correct. So people are beginning to see this thing and they're thinking, wait a minute, that's not the way it's supposed to be. How come this person's being, you know, they see the way the the media now is treats Biden. I mean, they talk about his ice cream cones and stuff like that. And <laughs> yeah. like the, the, the Democrats are and the liberals are really good at, you know, Jesus pointed that pointed them out in that saying that look at you. You're pointing out the splinter in your brother's eye, but you don't even see the log protruding from your own. You know, mm-hmm. it's one of those things. They will sit there and pick out every little thing that's wrong with us, but yet they're ignoring all these horrible things that, that they're doing. And okay, so, so I do think I do I, think well, there's I gotta a lot of people. I got to ask you a question that, here, Dennis. And, and look, sure. I, I appreciate you engaging with me on this. From what you're saying, people are looking at this, the media. That's not going to change this time. I, I do think there's more awareness to it. But how do you look at uh, so many, and, and again, we, we can say the numbers are off or, or the pollsters off, but it's been so consistent that a majority of registered voters in the country, whether it's Fox or CNN or CBS or or NPR, you name it, they all say in their polling and Gallup that uh, they're just they're they want to move beyond him, that they don't want to go back to him. I mean, um, how, how do you how do you interpret that? Well, he, here's my concern with that: is that if we if whoever we put up as a nominee, they're going to be scorched. The, the left is just going to lose their mind over them and call them everything but a child of God. Um, and, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, you hear people calling DeSantis even worse than Trump because he really hates gays and stuff like that, which is not the truth. So no matter who we put up, they're going to demonize them like they always will. And every year it gets worse and worse and worse, no matter who we put up. And I think the fact that if if we if we just if we as a country or we as Republicans and conservatives begin to say that, OK, they've beaten up Trump, we need to go on to somebody else. Basically, what we're telling them is that they can pick who we vote for and who we don't vote for because they'll just smear them so bad and they'll have to get rid of them. They, they begin to win because. We can't put the best person in. And I think that's just if we let them if we let them um, do this to Trump, that's only going to give them more um, more incentive to do it again and again. Look what we just did. We got rid of Trump. My other question is, why do they why do they so badly not want Trump? What is it about them, and what is it about the establishment? What is it about the establishment that doesn't want Trump in so badly that that that's that's my well, question? Well, look, I, I I get that, and and that's also one of my issues of of why I think it's so much more of a difficult burden for him to get reelected is because you have this massive array of forces against him that communicate to people in ways that that uh, they, they don't with others because so many of the others are unknown. Um, that when you got a hundred percent name ID and and fifty three to fifty five percent of voters say we're absolutely don't want you again, um, throwing everybody a curveball with a fresher face throws them on their heels and and makes it more difficult for them as opposed to running the playbook. But I, I, regardless of whether you or I agree or not, I want to just thank you for taking the time to call in because uh, I I appreciate your points. I I think they're well said. We may not completely agree, but on a lot of it, I think we do agree. And so I just, Dennis, thank you for calling in. I, I really do appreciate it a ton. 
Oh, you're welcome, man. Look, just I want to let you know that whoever, um, even if Trump doesn't become the nominee, I'm willing to get behind them. Uh, and that most of a lot of people well, that I yeah, that I okay, know I'm with. glad you said that because there's this. I mean, y'all, Biden is a disaster. He he's an absolute oh, he is. disaster. I, I'm, I'm happy at all the, the Republicans that decided to sit this um, to to sit this one out uh, when when. Uh, last election around and then the the republicans that went over and voted for biden i think it's too many unfortunately here's the issue that we have in america right now is that our there's too many people that are more willing to be entertained than informed we don't mm-hmm. have an informed electorate like we used to i mean when yeah, um Al, uh, alexis de Tocqueville came through and you read his book he was amazed that whether you know uh, whether you're in New York or way out in the middle of Kentucky, uh, that the people knew what was going on and they would held, hold their um, elected officials accountable. We don't have that anymore. We take this approach that, well, you know, we'll elect him and he'll go do that business up in Washington, and um, I'm just free to do my own thing and uh, have my own, you know, not be bothered with that. And that's not the way it's supposed to work. And yeah, people, people just go. aren't engaged anymore. Um, the, the just, right. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Look, Dennis, i got to let you go there, but I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation, and, and I just thank you for, for calling in. I really do, whether we agree or not. To, to some, A real key point we agree with, though, is that people aren't engaged. Uh, and and you got to – and I, I think it starts in your local community too, folks. You get engaged in your local community. Start changing there. Work your way up to Washington instead of trying to do trickle-down change. Uh, there's breaking news I've got to cover right now. A plane carrying uh, Vigeny Progrosian, the leader of the Wagner mercenary group, has surprise, surprise, surprise. It has crashed. All 10 people on the plane, including the three crew members, have died in the crash north of Moscow. Prigozhin, the leader of Wagner, you will recall, ran the coup against Vladimir Putin and got exiled to Belarus and somehow was back in the country and appeared just yesterday on a video for the very first time somewhere, and he's dead. He's been killed in a surprise mechanical malfunction of a plane. Surprise, surprise, surprise. That man was dead the moment he decided to back down from that coup. It just took a little while for Putin to get it working. This is a a breaking news story happening right now. Russian civil aviation authorities say Viktor Prigozhin was on a list of passengers on a plane that has crashed north of Moscow on its way to St. Petersburg. Um, Not a single one of us will be surprised that something like that has happened. Now, on that breaking news, we'll take a timeout, reset the clock, uh, get back to all the other news that's out there. There's so much more to talk about today beyond the debate. 877-973-7425 is the number you're listening to Eric Erickson. Did you know China has made it a priority to teach students financial literacy starting in preschool? Financial literacy isn't taught in our elementary schools, and parents lack the resources to teach it at home. American kids are yet again being left behind. Now there's a great way for parents and grandparents to help the kids they love learn about finance, thanks to The Sensibles, and at bcs-kids.com. The Sensibles are a team of animated superheroes who help kids age 6 to 12 develop smart money habits in a fun way. bcs-kids.com was created to channel this multimedia resource to kids everywhere. Buy a subscription for your loved ones, and each month, they'll get a Sensibles kit in the mail with an entertaining DVD, comic book, and activities. Digital subscriptions are also available. They'll also get access to an interactive website with a library of lessons, fun activities, and more. Want 20% off the monthly subscription costs? Visit at bcs-kids.com. Enter the promo code ERIC, my name, E-R-I-C-K. It's the sensible thing to do. Subscribe today at bcs-kids.com. My goodness, uh, watching the video footage caught on tape, they shot the plane out of the sky. Witnesses say there were bangs, and then you literally see a plane falling from the sky, uh, falling straight down. My goodness gracious. Um, Victor Prigozhin, 
the head of Wagner Group and the founder of the Wagner Group also. They were both on a plane, 10 people, including three crew, uh, fell out of the sky their airplane, went straight down after witnesses heard two bangs. Looks like Vladimir Putin took him out. All right. Uh, we got to move on from the debate and from Trump. We we got so much other stuff we need to talk about. We it's time consuming to talk about all that stuff. So I want to I want to move on. Uh, Charlie, you can like ask people or tell people we've moved on now because there's so much other stuff uh, that I got to talk about out there that I haven't had a chance to get to, um, including education intimidation, which we will get to when we come back because it's just what a what a profound story. Um, okay. Um. There is a a funny story out. Here's the headline. Why do Republicans disproportionately believe health misinformation? Now, there are, of course, a lot of Republicans who do believe in health misinformation, but this is written hilariously by Philip Bump at the Washington Post, who is a very progressive columnist, who claimed earlier this year that the only reason people are worried about crime is because they watch Fox News, that it's really not that big a deal, despite all of the data out there. And in fact, shortly thereafter, he was trying to use statistics, and shortly thereafter, it came out that there was actually a concerted effort in Democratic parts of the country to not report crime to the FBI crime database uh, so that it looked like crime was better than it actually was. There was a big cover-up. He never followed up, oddly enough. But what's so funny here is, is when you say Republicans disproportionately believe health misinformation, you have to ignore all of the people on the left who believe vaccines cause autism because that is uniquely a phenomenon of the left almost. You also have to ignore all the people on the left who believe that boys can become girls. Uh, The gender unicorn itself would blush with a statement that it's Republicans who disproportionately believe health misinformation because all of the health misinformation coming from the Democrats, Democrats like Philip Bump, believe are actually Uh, along with the Democrats, is true. It's misinformation, it's disinformation, but they believe it's true. I mean, you don't include as health misinformation gender unicorns and gender identity topics, even though it's health misinformation, but you don't include it because you believe the misinformation. It's, it's just a bigoted bias against Republicans and a refusal to acknowledge that Democrats are the ones who have led the nation for years in vaccine disinformation, let alone gender and, and biological disinformation. You just, you, you, you're picking and choosing to make this case. But that's what the media does. You know, back to Dennis's point, it, it is the media is relentlessly hostile, relentlessly hostile to all of us. And in fact, there's a somewhat hilarious story that I want to get to when we come back about education intimidation. Intimidation in the classroom and in education. You know what the intimidation is? The intimidation is parents wanting to have a say in what their kids learn in the classroom and not to have pornographic books in middle school. That's education intimidation, according to the left-wing website Axios. And by the way, I have started referring to Axios as a left-wing website because Axios is a left-wing website. Axios was the very first media outlet I noticed that had started using pregnant people instead of pregnant women. Uh, Super, super increasingly progressive. And so I want to highlight them as a left-wing website. Right now, I want to highlight for you the Walking Liberty Half Dollar amazing deal from Swiss America. I'm so glad to have Swiss America on the show. It's such a good deal. It's a beautiful half dollar Walking Liberty silver coin, $13.50 each delivered, limit $250 per customer while supplies last. I've got my Walking Liberty Half Dollar. It really is a gorgeous gorgeous work of art. Uh, it's not just an investment, but uh, if your money's in the market and you're concerned about the ebbs and flows of the stock market, precious metals can help ease those ebbs and flows. And if you're interested in getting into them, give Swiss America a phone call, get these walking Liberty half dollars. It's a great start to your uh, precious metal investing or as gifts for your kids for $13.50. You call them at 800-289-2646. That's 800 800- 289-2646. You can also text them there. Message data rates apply. You, ju- you can text them my name or just call them 800-289-2646. Say you want the Walking Liberty half dollar. Eric Erickson told you about it. You can also go to SwissAmerica.com slash Eric. So 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com slash Eric.
I am a small businessman. The company that I run for my radio show, it's a small business. I've got employees. I don't have HR. You may be in that situation, and you may really need HR. Well, you may want to talk to Bambi. When running a business, your employees can create all sorts of interesting situations, and they could get you in trouble. What happens when two employees are squabbling? One of them smells bad all the time. What do you do? How do you navigate the rules? With Bambi, you get access to your own dedicated HR manager starting at just $99 a month. They're available by phone, email, real-time chat. Onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance. Your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. Let Bambi handle your employees for you. Their HR autopilot automates important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. Listen, you want U.S.-based HR managers who give you experience, expertise, a personal touch you need to make it seem like they're a part of your team. They could cost eighty grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 a month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now. Type in Eric Erickson under podcast when you sign up. It'll help you. It'll help your company grow. It'll help you keep peace of mind. It's spelled B-A-M-B-E-E. Bam. B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Eric Erickson. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the United States of America. I am so glad to have you with me. The phone number is 877-973-7425 if you wish to be on the program. I want to explain to you something that happens on both sides of the aisle. And you need to understand and appreciate it happens on both sides. The conservatives do it. Progressives do it. Republicans do it. Democrats do it. You got to understand that. What happens is both sides have groups that research messaging. And one of the things both sides are finding out is parents are pretty angry right now about education. It actually transcends party and race and ethnicity in it, it, all walks of life. The only people in the country who are not upset about the state of public education are far left white progressives who tend to have their kids in private school, and that is a remarkable, true statistic. Upper-income white progressives who tend to have their kids in private school think public schools are doing just fine. I personally view that as their latent racism. But they think schools are doing fine, and they're in the minority. Everybody else in this country is really upset with state of education, public or private. And with public, uh, it's it's a little bit easier to deal with because you're dealing with elected officials at the end of the day, school boards, your state superintendent, things like that, governors, they tend to be involved in education depending on your state constitution. And parental rights have become a big deal. One of the big issues is the pornography in middle schools and elementary schools. And I know people laugh this off, they scoff at it, but it's true. It is remarkable that uh, the left could claim that we haven't banned the incandescent light bulb when you actually will get fined if you sell it now. you Yes, a business that sells a general incandescent light bulb right now is going to get fined. But the left says, well, that's not, a, that's not a ban. That's just a fine. But if you can go to your local library and find a book that is deeply pornographic with explicit pictures and it's not allowed in the elementary school library, they're like, oh, it's banned. It's banned. Never mind. You go to the library and get it, just not the elementary school library. We don't have the penthouse of the Playboy in there either or the Hustler magazine. We, we don't do that. We, but these books that explicitly teach kids how to perform sexual acts, same-sex sexual acts usually, well, they're banned if they're allowed in, in libraries, just not the elementary school library. But the light bulb, nah, it's not banned. What the left is doing is they're trying to focus group. They're trying to get panels of people together. It happens on both sides to focus group and poll test lines and quotes to talk about issues. And the right is dominating it right now, just crushing it with parental rights. And the fact that parents should have a say in their kids' education, this sort of stuff matters. The right really gets it. The left really doesn't. And the left is having hell to pay because 
they're they're kind of caught off guard by this. And so this is interesting. Russell Contreras, the author of Axios Latino. Axios is a left-wing news site that pretends to be mainstream. This is the headline. Education intimidation bills have skyrocketed since 2021. Nearly 400 proposals aimed at allowing parents and government officials to change school lessons have been introduced in state legislatures since 2021, according to a new report from a nonprofit that defends free expression. Less, though less than 10% have passed, the climate around the bills has intimidated educators into self-censorship in schools, limiting discussions around racism and gender, Penn America said. The uptick in proposals comes as conservatives organize parents under the guise of fighting for parents' rights and against critical race theory, a graduate school concept rarely taught in grade schools. Got that? Rarely taught in grade schools. School boards around the country, Christopher Rufo and others have found school boards around the country have uh, built critical race theory teams, CRT and DEI teams, and they shape the school subject matter and how the school lessons are taught through the lens of CRT. Critical race theory is not taught in elementary school, but the way American history is taught is through the lens of critical race theory. It's an important distinction and one the media is either too stupid or dishonest or both to be able to talk about. But notice how they're talking about these things. Intimidation. Someone focus grouped, I'm sure, among progressives and thought it was a good idea. It's just going to make parents mad. Why listen to this? Listen to how PIN America and Axios define proposals that are, they consider, education intimidation. Quote, Bills and proposals that radically expand the avenues for lone parents, government officials, and citizens to monitor and exert control over pedagogical decisions. Bills and proposals that radically expand the avenues for lone parents, government officials, and citizens to monitor and exert control over pedagogical decisions. In other words, they don't think parents should be able to have a say in their kids' education. That's what they're going with. That's what they're going with. They don't want parents to have a say in their kids' education, which is bizarre. This reminds me, what was it, of uh, Terry McAuliffe, who was the, the the governor in Virginia, who said he, he doesn't think that um, parents should have a say in education. Let me see if I can I can find the talking points. Let, let's play you a couple of his talking points that, that I can I can rapidly recall here because all of these are kind of important to understand. What bothers me to my core is what this man is doing. He's dividing parents against parents, parents against school boards. He's using your children as political pawns in his campaign. It is a racist dog whistle. Folks, we are better than that. We We will not have that hatred here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And he lost. This is this is the one I wanted to find. Listen to this one. Not to be knowledge about it. Also take them off the shelves. And I'm not going to let parents come into schools and actually take books out and make their own decisions. You vetoed it. So, yeah, I parents. You stopped the bill that I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. But, you know, I get really tired. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they ought to teach. That killed him. It was that moment in the Virginia election where the polling shifted. I know this because Glenn Youngkin said as much. Glenn Youngkin's pollster said as much. The media says as much as well. Every single person, let me play this clip for you again. You, you got to listen to this clip. This is Terry McAuliffe in a debate with Glenn Youngkin. And even now, Terry McAuliffe is willing to acknowledge that that's the moment the tide shifted in his uh, against him. 
veto books, Glenn, not to be knowledge about it, also take them off the shelves. And I'm not going to let parents come into schools and actually you take books out and make their own decisions. You vetoed it. So, to yeah, I parents, you stopped the bill that I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. But, you know, not I get really tired. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they ought to teach. That killed him. That cost him the campaign. Now, here comes PIN America, a progressive group, by the way. It's not identified as such by the left-wing Axios, but Axios doesn't identify itself as left-wing either. And PIN America says bills and proposals that radically expand the avenues for lone parents, government officials, and citizens to monitor and exert control over pedagogical decisions is education intimidation. School boards need to be intimidated. School boards around this country need you to show up and harass them over their left-wing agendas. You as a parent, your taxpayer dollars go to these public schools that are putting pornography in elementary schools and refusing to be honest about it. These are the schools that think that your kindergartner needs a lesson in sex education. Your kindergartner needs a lecture in how to have sexual relations with someone. And they think it's just fine. And they think you should shut up. They think you should have no say in your kid's education. It is just remarkable that we're at this point. Glenn Youngkin, the governor of Virginia, was on Fox News, had this to say. This is common sense. Uh, we are very straightforwardly saying that first, parents are in charge of their children's lives. The kids don't belong to the state. They belong to parents and to families. And they have the ultimate say in decisions that that child is going to make with a parent, not with a bureaucrat. And finally, at the end of the day, this is the, these are the exact same school systems that fought us on allowing parents to decide whether children wear a mask or whether sexually explicit materials could be removed from the curriculum or that schools were going to stay shut for an, a, long, a, a, a long period of time, unnecessarily long, which resulted in massive learning loss. And again, parents today in Virginia get to decide whether their child wears a mask. And ch parents in Virginia today get to decide whether sex explicit material should be removed from the curriculum for their child. Schools are open, and, and these school districts will, in fact, comply with the law because it is the law and they don't have a choice. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Listen. Glenn Youngkin won that race in Virginia on education, saying kids belong to parents, not the state. And parents should have a strong say in what their kids learn and how their kids are educated. And in Virginia and elsewhere, the left is pushing back. But their talking point is that it's education intimidation for parents to have a say in their kids' education. That's not going to fly with most parents. I got to tell you, we did a parental rights panel at the gathering. More people across the country, watched that online and in person and talked about it than anything else, including the presidential candidates. It dominated the conversations. People are still asking me where they can see it. Uh, if you want to see it, text ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777, and you can go to the gathering uh, page on YouTube. It's the very top link, and you can see it. it it's it, remarkable to me, genuinely, truly, honestly remarkable how the left is so tone deaf on these issues. It's all about control. They want to control and indoctrinate your kids to shape the future of the country, the way your, your kids think, how your kids think, what they think about, what they don't think about, what, what they don't learn. It's what, how they learn. It's the left is doing this willfully and intentionally to try to shape the future of the country, to try to shape your children, to indoctrinate your children, and parents are fed up with it. It's education intimidation, according to the left, for parents to have a say in their children's education. You remember that when you go vote. Now, I want you to remember, if you go to EdenPureDeals.com and you put in Eric, E-R-I-C-K, you can get three Eden Pure Thunderstorms for less than $200. What you do is you go to EdenPureDeals.com. You'll see the discount code box on the front page. You put in Eric, E-R-I-C-K, and you get three Eden Pure Thunderstorms for less than $200. So they wipe out odors. They, now, listen, they're air purifiers, so they get rid of the pollen and the mold and all that, but they wipe out odors. Uh, they wipe out litter box odors, pet odors, smoke odors, musty odors, you name it. They just work. EdenPureDeals.com. EdenPureDeals.com is the, is the uh, website. And then you put in the discount code ERIC. You can get one for your upstairs, one for your downstairs, one for your basement, one for your RV, one for your travel bag. You can plug them into the wall. You can hold them in your hand. They're small. I travel with one. 
and you can even plug it up with a USB cord to a USB outlet, like a laptop or a car uh, USB port. And you can run it if someone's been smoking in a rental car. You clean out those odors. I've done that many times, and it works. EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is ERIC, E-R-I-C-K. This is Eric Erickson here across the United States of America. The phone number, 877-973-7425. I just got the most incredible email. Greenville, South Carolina. Our affiliate, News Talk 98.9, uh, WORD, sent us an email on September 22nd. That's a Friday. They're having, they call it the Bourbon and Bacon Fest. Bourbon and Bacon Fest, people. Bourbon and bacon together in one place? And I bet there's got to be cigars involved too. I is is this heaven? No, son. It's Greenville, South Carolina. I I do believe I you people over in Greenville going to be seeing me on September 22nd. I, how can I say no to a bourbon and bacon festival? I mean that just that I I mean that's like I mean the body of Christ will be present. I I, I I'm that what a good idea. Why doesn't everybody have a bourbon and bacon festival? It's like the two greatest things on the planet put together, plus cigars. Uh, yes, yes, those of you listening out of Greenville, South Carolina, my beloved affiliate with a bourbon and bacon festival, I I, I will be there. Uh, I have put it on my calendar. I'm coming to sample bourbon and eat a lot of bacon and smoke cigars in Greenville, South Carolina. That just sounds like absolutely delightful. I'm so glad to know about this. And I'm just disappointed in the rest of America all of a sudden for nobody else having come up with this brilliant idea. All right. We got to move on to other things because there's a lot. Um, You know, I mentioned this earlier. More people call in sick on August 24th than any other day of the year. The second sickest day of the year is the Monday following the Super Bowl every uh, every February. So the, the second most likely day for people to call in sick to work is the day after the Super Bowl. But August 24th is the most likely day every year for people to call in sick. Uh, And the only, they don't really know why. So this is a a study from Flamingo, a firm that helps companies manage employee absences and medical leaves. And it analyzed data on sick days taken by American workers over the past five years. And August 24th is the day most people, and it's tomorrow. Uh, so more of you listening right now will call in sick tomorrow than any other day. I actually have a theory about it. It's because schools, schools have come back in and everybody's getting sick. I, I've got emails. I mentioned this earlier a little bit, and I've got multiple emails from people who have gotten COVID. Their kids are going back to school. They brought home COVID. Uh, a couple other people now saying they've gotten the flu in the last week after my kid got the flu. Everybody's going back to school. They, they get the plague. They get botulism. They, they get strep throat. They get COVID. They get the flu. Uh, they, they get the throw-up diarrhea. Oh, y'all know the throw-up diarrhea if you're a parent. I, oh, yeah, that was awful. I think I'd rather have double COVID and the flu than the throw-up diarrhea. But nonetheless, I mean, you got everything coming out. Both It's just awful. It's awful. It's something you don't have to deal with until you're a parent. Because when you're a kid, you repress it that you got this in school, and then you bring it home to mom and dad. It's awful. Um, and... Everybody gets it by now because most kids are back in school other than the the mid-Atlantic states and Texas. Everybody else is going back to school right before Labor Day. And you piled it up and your kids, you've dodged the bullets all summer long. The kids are back in school and now you you got to throw up diary in the house. I don't even know what the technical name for that is, but if you're a parent, that's what you call it. And you all know what I'm talking about. And I'm sorry to use such a terrible phrase on the radio, but you know what I'm talking about. And, And this is the moment... Your, your 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 immunity, your immune system has has just had enough, and um, it's just it's it's you got to deal with it. All right, um, Jim, we're gonna have to do that when we come back because because I ran too long. Um, when we come back, I forgot to tell you guys about Omaha Steaks, and now I don't have enough time to tell you about Omaha Steaks, but we'll take care of that. We'll 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 make it right. Um, I gotta tell you guys. When we come back, I want to talk about control. 
because so much of the left's agenda right now is about controlling us. It's about uh, the car you drive, where you live, how you live, what your kids are taught in school. It, it's, I mean, they call the right authoritarian. These people are ruthlessly authoritarian. And we need to, to talk about it, particularly as it goes to the climate agenda. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.